What up, guys? It's your boy, The Hater, and I wanted to talk a little bit about the Tony Khan tweets. Apparently, a lot of people uh, find these tweets to be very dramatic and very childish. And while I agree with that sentiment, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and be the one who doesn't agree. I will say this. It is completely consistent with Tony Khan's character, right? I don't mean character in wrestling terms. I mean his character as a human, right? And I don't mean that in a way that, that, that's being critical, right? I don't really have anything against him. Let's be real, guys. He's living the dream. You know what I mean? He has his own wrestling company and he gets to book. Now, we don't like, some of us don't like the way he books things. I think the company is not doing very well. And quite honestly, I never really thought it was going to do very well. But nevertheless, he is the booker. Now, taking everything I just said into account, right? This is just a, basically a rich kid who has a company that he can book wrestling matches in, right? So the jabs that he threw at Shawn Michaels and Triple H are completely consistent with someone who plays, I don't know, SmackDown or whatever, here comes the pain, and plays GM mode, whichever game invented that, right? And gets angry at the other side, right? Especially if you're playing in some sort of competitive format with a friend, which people used to do back in the day, right? It's that kind of competition, you know? The fact is, he really does want to be on par with WWE. He knows that he's not. So he points to situations where he's almost on par, right? And the truth is, if Cena and Undertaker cannot draw a million people to NXT, then NXT is doomed. I mean, that just means that everyone that's regularly on NXT is so bad that even with Cena and Taker, nobody really cares about NXT. Cena was announced and Taker was heavily teased with that gong, right? That gong by itself, even if there was no Taker, should have drawn a few thousand people there, right? The facts are that nobody cares about wrestling anymore and that's why we are here. Now, with that being said, NXT is trying yet another kind of renaissance. Every year they do this, where they have these like breakout tournaments, more on that a little bit later. Let's focus on Tony Khan, right? Because this was before these tournaments, and Tony Khan's points, I mean, I'm not saying they're good, but him taking a jab at Triple H and Shawn Michaels and saying Shawn Michaels is not going to win Booker of the Year, it's completely consistent with someone who cares about who wins Booker of the Year. This is a throwaway award that I think is given by Dave Meltzer. We've already established, and it's pretty much common consensus now, that Dave Meltzer does not understand wrestling. You know, he acts like he does, and people listen to him, but this does not mean he understands it. He doesn't get it. You know why? The things that he likes are things that draw zero dimes, right? So there you have it. That right there is self-evident, and it explains why Dave Meltzer clearly doesn't get wrestling. Now, that aside, right? The things that Tony Khan is concerned with are the things that people on message boards are concerned with, right? The things that Dave Meltzer is concerned with. So for him, Booker of the Year matters a lot, right? Having a five-star match matters a lot. So in the metrics that matter to Tony Khan, he is winning, right? He, in his eyes, he's winning, right? He clearly doesn't care about this company doing well financially. And in some ways, there is... I hate to say it, but there is, and I can't believe I'm defending Tony Khan, but there is an element of positivity in there for the fans, right? So I was a big TNA fan back in the day. You know, I kind of stopped watching them to be for a little bit and was mainly focusing on TNA, right? Because I was enjoying it so much more. And one thing that I wanted was a TNA video game and it took forever and they made it. And I thought it was okay. A lot of people thought it was horrible. I thought it was okay, right? I haven't even bought the W video game, but the fact is what the fact is. They announced it quick and they tried to make it. They are just misguided. They think that catering to the neckbeards, right, and the Reddit people is something that people want, right? They really overestimate the power of this demographic, right? Both the power in terms of numbers and in terms of dollars they're willing to spend, right? They got to look at the lifetime customer value of, you know, a Reddit fan. It's probably like 10 bucks, you know what I mean? Like I've spent thousands of dollars on WWE video games and tickets and things like that, right? And, you know, the occasional shirt here and there when I was a kid and pay-per-views. Let's not even talk about that as well as the network, right? Thousands. My, cust my lifetime customer value is relatively high. For the average Redditor, right, who watches AW, these are people that are going to go pirate the show anyways. I know I'm painting with a broad brush and I don't mean to, but the truth is that a lot of the things that Tony Khan has done have been to support the idea that he is this, you know, quote unquote, booker of the people, right? He books the matches people want to see, right? Like, we didn't have to wait 10 years to see, you know, Young Bucks versus FTR, right? As soon as they brought FTR and they're like, boom, 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 do it, right? We didn't have to wait forever to see uh, Kenny Omega become champion, right? In my opinion, Kenny Omega should still be hunting for the title instead of being a completely irrelevant character right now, right? Because that's really the payoff, right? Same thing with Adam Page. Like, they should have had like, at this point, there should have been like three 
AEW champions, like Jericho, Dean Ambrose, and maybe CM Punk, right? And he should have had long title reigns, right? But instead, he is he is fast-tracking people like MJF, fast-tracking people like Adam Page, as well as Kenny Omega. Now, I'm not saying fast-tracking like they're not ready. I'm not saying that. I'm saying like you could build this up for a lot longer, right? Look at Manny Pacquiao and Mayweather. They built that up for like 15 years. The point is, Tony Khan does do things for the people, and he only wants the admiration of the wrestlers, which I don't know why, because his roster includes people like Kip Sabian, but it doesn't matter. That's what he wants, right? He wants to be Booger of the Year. He wants to surpass them to be in five-star matches, which they probably already have, right? He wants to put out a video game, because as a wrestling fan, these are the things that he admired, right? He probably liked wrestling video games. He probably cared about who was Booker of the Year. He cared about Dave Meltzer's opinion. And he cared about what the people on the message board said, right? People like me, who are not nerds, and who are not the children of billionaires, right? Don't care about these things. I tune into wrestling because I want to be entertained. I can I can tell you guys, if, like there was a King of the Ring tournament, I think it's the one that Kurt Angle won, where I actually took a piece of paper from the printer, right? I was in like sixth grade, fifth grade, I don't even know, right? And I did the brackets and I wrote them out and I followed through with the brackets. I took it so seriously. I would I would simulate the matches on on the SmackDown video game, right? If I could, if the wrestlers were in the game. You know what I mean? I would try to create the wrestlers. I was so into it, right? But I was into it as a fan who just likes watching on TV, right? This is like right before the internet kind of, you know, like the internet was definitely around, but it wasn't really a thing, right? Nobody really used it as much. So there really was no resources where you could go and look at, at the bracket, right? Except maybe WWE.com, but that was kind of lame. So, and you couldn't like fill it out, right? So I'm taking this seriously the same way like my grandpa would watch the World Cup and he would like manually write down the results because there was no internet, right? So you could keep track of how many points someone needs to advance. So there's different types of fans. And people like me were the normal fans, right? People don't remember. If, you were, if you're my age, I'm almost 36. Can't believe it cuts, but I'm almost 36. Um, if you were my age, right, you know that if you were in like sixth grade, um, you know, if you're 36-ish or so, when you were like in sixth or fifth grade or seventh grade, and even later, right, people would always pretend wrestling wasn't cool. Like everyone watched wrestling, but everyone was like kind of ashamed of it, right? Because it was fake. I remember in middle school and in high school, people started like, watching football right i was a little immigrant kid i don't know anything about american football at the time so i'm watching wrestling i'm thinking this is the best thing ever but a lot of people were like oh you suck like you're a loser for watching wrestling and i'm like what are you talking about wrestling rules right and then i'd go to like a random raw right and i'd see these same people there being fans right i'm like what are you guys doing here huh i thought this was for losers they'd be like oh i don't know so the point is those were their normal fans the fans that that's all they did is like they watched and when wrestling was in town they might if their parents let them would go to the show. They'd buy him a ticket and they'd go to the show, right? But the but the neckbeard community came up came about much later. Like I wouldn't be surprised. I know Tony Khan's like, oh, I used to have tapes. I wouldn't be surprised if Tony Khan started watching like you know like after WrestleMania 29. You know what I mean? Like I wouldn't be surprised if that was the truth. You know what I'm saying? So the facts are what the facts are, right? The things that matter to him have we have been conditioned as wrestling fans not me of course and not you guys but the dumber wrestling fans have been conditioned to care about things like five star matches right i looked at at dave Meltzer's five star matches and i always bring up this example it was like andrade versus johnny gargano right and the match was good it was a good nxt match but i'm not gonna even pretend that this match is better than like christian and chris jericho at wrestlemania right i'm not gonna pretend this is better than undertaker Shawn michaels or Shawn michaels kurt angle or Shawn michaels and chris masters it doesn't matter all those matches are better because they have Shawn michaels period you know what i'm saying it's as simple as that right you mean to tell me that three stages of hell was was worse than than adam cole versus mjf or whatever else has gotten five stars of course it wasn't that's ridiculous right so the real fans are like okay that's great. There's, a, there's some guy, some nerd named uh, Dave Meltzer who thinks that these matches are good, right? And he rates them as such. But the rest of us aren't watching this because nobody cares. Like, I remember when I first heard about Dave Meltzer's, like, five-star system. I'm like, oh, this guy must know what he's doing. I don't know who he was. He must know what he's doing because he's been around for so long and people keep talking about this, right? On YouTube and stuff, right? So I ordered Wrestle Kingdom. I can't believe I did this. I ordered it on pay-per-view somehow. I think it was that one year when they had JR. It was, like, on Fight Night. I ordered it on something. Or New Japan World. And I watched it. Like live, right? I was staying up till like in the early hours. And the, the, the final match was uh, Hiroshi Tanahashi versus um, Okada, I think. Right? It was like one of their first matches. Their first big match. And this one Tanahashi won. And, and like Kevin Kelly and the other guy are like, oh my god, this is the best match I've ever seen. And I'm like, 
No, it isn't. It's not, it's not even close. I can rattle off the top of my head like 10 Rey Mysterio matches that blow this out of the water, right? It wasn't even that good of a match. It was kind of boring. You know, the crowd wasn't really into it because the New Japan crowd's weird. You know, there's a lot of things. So I'm like, okay, immediately. I only needed one point of evidence, right? Earlier, they also had AJ Styles, AJ Styles versus Nakamura. I thought that was also crap. So I was like, all right, I have two data points. I'm told that these matches are great. They're not. AJ Styles has had like, like you, they would have you believe that that's like one of AJ Styles' best matches. The one he had at Wrestle Kingdom with Nakamura. No, are you kidding me? He said better matches on throwaway episodes of TNA. You know, so immediately I'm like, all right, Dave Meltzer is not someone that I, I trust, uh, whose opinion I trust anymore, right? Tony Khan, on the other hand, right, who's probably kind of a nerd and doesn't really understand wrestling either, he's like, oh, well, no, 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 not the thing that I really enjoy, the thing that really is good, he's like, no, that's not good because Dave Meltzer said so, right? Like, I remember, I didn't even watch it. It was like that first women's main event in the NXT. It was like, I think, I, I think it was Bailey and Sasha Banks. And, like, I hear people like Seth Rollins being like, I had tears in my eyes. I think he said that. One of my friends told me, he's like, I had tears in my eyes watching this match. What? Are you kidding me? I didn't even watch the match. I was like, oh, the main event is this? Great. I can go to bed a little earlier. You know what I'm saying? I just turned it off immediately. I'm like, I'm not watching this, this, this 30-minute women's match. It's probably going to be all botchy. I heard it was good, but I don't care. Right? I have no interest in who the women's champion is in NXT because I know what's going on. You try to put this forward to push the agenda that, like, women's wrestling is as good as men's wrestling. And anyone who's honest knows that it's not. But Tony Khan is not one of these honest people. So, in summation, guys, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to be nice to you today, right? In summation, Tony Khan just doesn't get it, right? It's as simple as that. He doesn't understand what does matter and what doesn't matter, right? He's a businessman in, in name only. He is instead his father's son. His father is a brilliant businessman. And Tony Khan is like, he, I'm sure he gets like accounting and finance. I'm not saying he's a complete buffoon. He's a complete idiot. But the truth is, I don't think he quite understands wrestling. Not as a business, but as a medium, right? Wrestling is all about big buildups and quick payoffs that are memorable, but that are also forgettable, if that makes any sense, right? Like we all remember Stone Cold, Stone Cold turning uh, on The Rock or whatever, turning heel, I should say, and aligning himself with, with Vince McMahon. But then after that, you know, like two weeks later, the invasion, the, 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 the invasion starts and Stone Cold's like, oh, he's a bad guy. He's a good guy. He turns super face for a while. Then he turns heel again. And people just forget about these things, right? Because all that, all that you know and all that you remember is Stone Cold rules and Stone Cold beat the rock at WrestleMania. That's what people are supposed to remember, right? Here, they'll be like, well, you know, je- like, like that, that new guy, Nick, whatever, Nick Wayne. They're like, oh, his father was, with- why are we even talking about Nick Wayne? Like, Nick Wayne is not a compelling wrestler or a character. He's just another Danny Garcia. Like, nobody wants to see this guy, right? So he doesn't understand what does and doesn't sell. The only thing he gets is the payoff part, right? That one, he nails, quote-unquote, because he understands. Oh, people want to see Ed versus Christian. So we're probably going to get it, like, I mean, it's... I hope we don't get it at full gear, which I think is in November. But we might get it in, like, December or January, right? We might even get it in November, like, at, at the way things are going. So, then what? Right? Then what? Then it's going to be Edge versus Luchasaurus, and I'm supposed to care? It's going to be, what, Christian versus Darby Allen again? Like, nobody wants to see that anymore, right? We want to see Edge versus Christian, and the way that wrestling works is we're supposed to be teased this. Tease, 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 until it happens maybe a year from now, right? With them... Maybe a little bit earlier because they're a little old. So we're not going to wait forever. But the idea stands, right? The idea stands and Tony Khan doesn't get it. What he does get is he wants to be Booker of the Year. And he wants to desperately beat NXT. His goal is not to get 10 million viewers. His goal is to get one more viewer than NXT does. Right? That's his goal because he thinks small. He, his goal is, I need to beat WWE to become the number one. But that should be the goal. That's not WWE's goal. WWE goes, like, like, if you go to a board meeting with WWE, you think Vince McMahon's goal is... Goal is, uh, guys, this year, I want to maintain our place as number one. No, that's an axiomatic fact. Like, Vince McMahon doesn't consider the possibility that he won't be number one. His goal is, oh, we made $10 billion last year, whatever, not $10 billion. We made $1 billion last year. Let's try to make $1.5 billion next year, right? That's his goal. He's a money-driven individual. He's a businessman. Tony Khan is a fantasy booker. So, I can't hate him for it. I can't hate him for the fact that he decides that the things that he cares about are... I don't know, booking, right? Booking awards and things like that that nobody cares about, you know? So it's interesting to see that the wrestling fans are kind of turning on him. I want to see where this goes in the future, you know? And I'm sure that I've missed some of the tweets. There was something about, he said something about his mother. I don't know what that's all about. I just focused on this, like, the jabs that he took at Triple H and Shawn Michaels, right? Um, he he thinks it's part of a game, right? And it is part of a game, right? It, these are the same kind of jabs that, I don't know, like, Barcelona fans, 
my take against Real Madrid fans, right? Because Tony Khan, at the end of the day, is a fan, all right? 